What's going on guys? Happy Wednesday. Dr. Corey Ogner coming back at you here. We are talking about the meniscus again for week two of February. All right, last week, if you didn't see our video, go back and watch it because we went in tough, deep detail on how to treat a meniscal injury, typically on how to diagnose it, I should be more specific. We spoke about how to solve that mystery of knee pain and we went through a battery of tests, being special tests that you should do to kind of tell you if it's truly your meniscus and how to recover from that and what to do in order to recover from that. So now we're gonna dive deeper into how to treat your meniscus in terms of like going through two things in total here. We're gonna go through number one, imaging, on why an MRI is important and how it's gonna tell you which layer is actually damaged of the meniscus because there's two zones we're gonna talk about which are very different to each other. Number two is treatment for the meniscus. How do we treat it properly and what exercises should we do for it? And we're gonna go through three exercises in specific tonight that are gonna cover exactly what we need to do for that meniscus overall. So with that being said, we're gonna go into kind of why. Like, why do we need imaging? So typically you'll go to the physical therapist, you'll go to your orthopedic doctor, they'll do some special tests on you. This might be going on, this might not. We have to do some imaging. If they do an x-ray, it's not really gonna show exactly what's going on. It's gonna give you kind of that bone breakdown, maybe some arthritis will show, or some narrowing in the kind of canal between your tibia and your femur bone. But you truly need an MRI, because an MRI is gonna show you any soft tissue. So it's gonna show you like ligaments, it's gonna show you muscles, tendons, all those like little things besides bones. And it's gonna show them in good deep depth and detail. So it's gonna really depict two different layers as we look at it. You have two zones of the meniscus. One is called the red zone. The red zone just means the outer third. So you have little rings on the meniscus into three different separate layers. The outermost layer, the third layer is the vascular layer. It's called the red zone. So if you have a little bit of a tear in that outer layer and it's in the red zone, it's vascularized, meaning it's gonna get some blood supply from blood vessels and it's gonna get nutrients through that blood and oxygen so it's gonna be able to repair itself and heal. If it's in the inner two thirds, it's called the white zone. And what that means is it's avascular because it's white. It's kind of like the end of the tendon. It's called a watershed zone because no blood flow gets to it. That means no oxygen, no nutrients, no kind of healing properties get to that area. So it's not gonna be able to heal and recover. So if you have a tear through that inner two thirds of that white zone, you're most likely going to need surgery because it doesn't really respond super well to physical therapy or exercises. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some cases where people come to therapy and they have a big tear through all three layers, being the white and the red, so the inner and the outer thirds, and they do fine with physical therapy. It just depends on how your body responds and how well it heals. And like diet, lifestyle, stress, like all those things have to play an important role in that too, which you never really truly hear about. The other thing is treatment. You get your MRI, you kind of see where it is, whether it's in the outer kind of third or it's in the inner two thirds. Treatment is you don't want to make it worse and you don't want to prolong recovery. So that's the most important thing when it comes to treatment. So we don't want to make it worse. We don't want to prolong recovery. So we need to know exactly what to do and the right exercises that aren't going to make it worse and that aren't going to set us way, way back or put us on that roller coaster of pain, but instead put us closer to getting back to the things we love doing and the things we love kind of promoting. And just to give you an example, I just had a call with someone yesterday um, from Canada. We just had a simple call, someone like we do free calls to people 10 or 15 minutes. And she was telling me she's been going to physical therapy. She had a meniscal tear and she can barely bend her knee past 30 degrees. But her goal is to get to 90 degrees. She can go up and down stairs and she can't really straighten the leg. It's kind of bent into a five degree position where it's kind of stuck. And I gave her these exercises I'm going to show you tonight. And she sent me a video about like three hours later and she was able to almost fully straighten her leg and bend it close to 90. So guys, she just wasn't doing the right exercises for her based on like what her therapist told her. So always ask your therapist tons of questions because you need to do the right exercises for you that kind of match your restrictions. That's so, so important. I can't kind of mention that enough. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you guys what those kind of layers of the meniscus truly look like here. Okay, so give me one sec. All right, so you guys should be able to see my screen here. All right, so we're looking at the meniscus again from this kind of application here. This is the lateral meniscus on the left. This is the medial meniscus on the right. So again, this is the inner part of the body. This is the outer part. So again, you can't really see those layers. That's why I have another kind of image here for you. These are the actual layers that make up that meniscus there as we look at it on that side. So if I blow this up, this is the anatomy of the meniscus. We talked about the outer third. This is the red zone. It has good blood supply in the outer kind of corner of it, also called the horn sometimes. Right. So that horn area, that red zone, gets a lot of vascularization to it. It's going to heal well. It's going to do well with PT, like we mentioned. Good blood supply. That inner layer here, the inner two-thirds to be exact, is the white zone. So white here, and then kind of like a purple-pinkish area. You know, this lacks blood supply. This whole area here that my cursor is over. 
but you are kind of damaged or you have a nice tear through this area in the inner part of it, you're most likely not going to do super well because you're gonna have so much pain, so much inflammation, and there's no like healing of blood or nutrients getting to that area. Meaning it's probably not gonna do super well without surgery. Surgery isn't always the worst thing in the world. Sometimes it's just go in and clean up the tear. It's like shaving the end of an old blanket. It's really quick, easy recovery. Sometimes people are in PT four to six weeks and they're good to go. It just depends on how severe that tear is and where it is in terms of like its proximity. That is the anatomy. Hopefully that makes good sense to you guys and you get a good picture of what's going on there. And we looked at the meniscus here, lateral and medial. So now I wanna get into treatment. Three things we wanna work on with treatment. Number one is promoting range of motion. So we wanna be able to get your knee to bend well and be able to straighten well. Number two is we wanna get a reduction in swelling. And that's what the exercises promote. If you're using muscles to pump fluid, it's gonna help with gravity pump some of that fluid being like lymph fluid out of the muscles and out of that area around the knee joint or even the ankle because sometimes it pulls to the foot and that's going to get it back to the heart to recirculate throughout the body and that's why elevation and icing has its important role as well early on in the process and the third thing is we want to increase strengthening so just gentle strengthening which we're going to go through in the exercises here you should be able to see my screen this is my youtube page all my patients have access to this tons of exercises this is our knee playlist we have a playlist for every joint we add to it every day we're going to go through three really good key exercises that you want to be able to do that promotes knee bending, knee straining, and increasing strength, like those three things we just mentioned. Number one, hitting knee bending on the head. These are called heel slides. Super, super simple. We'll make this bigger for you. Really simple. This is me doing it in the living room here. Stretching strap around the foot. You don't want to use an elastic because it snaps on you, it can get you in the face, or it doesn't allow you to kind of relax the knee as much. But all you want to do, you can lay, you can sit up nice and upright. Some people like to relax more and lay down on their back. That's fine too. All you're doing is your legs completely relaxed. Your arms are doing all the work and the straps around the mid portion of the foot. And all you're doing is you're just using your arms and your upper body strength to pull that heel to the butt and hold for two to three seconds when it's bent as much as you can. That's it. You're just going back and forth. Really simple, guys. And again, this promotes bending of your knee and it gets synovial fluid moving quite a bit. Let me go back here. We just cut to the next one. This is straight leg raise, right? This is the next exercise we're gonna go through. This does the opposite. This is gonna promote straining of your leg and it's gonna help promote strengthening of your quadriceps muscle. So again, we're getting a nice straining ability of the leg. I usually cue patients to push their knee down into the floor. This will engage more of their quads here. If it's painful though, then don't do that. Sometimes if you turn your foot out to the side, it takes a little pressure off of the meniscus if it's an inner meniscus issue. Sometimes if you push it to the inside, it takes pressure off the outer meniscus if it's an outer meniscus issue. We'll kind of play this video for you guys. You wanna squeeze that quad first I'm showing, and then lift this leg to about the height of the other leg, and then slowly lower. So that quad's engaged the whole time. You can see, make fun of and laugh at my nasty uh, golfer's tan there. That was over the summer. So that is a really simple one, straight leg raise. Um, we're not gonna go into quad stretch. We're getting into some other things here. So those are the first two, promoting knee bending, promoting knee straining. And the second one, straight leg raise, promotes quadricep strengthening. And these should be pain-free. If they're painful, you gotta find other exercises for you or ask your therapist or me for some other kind of modification. This is the last one I wanna show you. And this kind of pans from the second one we just went over. So these are straight terminal knee extensions. Let me move myself out of the way here. Terminal knee extensions means you're just getting that end range knee lengthening. So you're actually getting a kind of push back of your knee towards the wall behind you. Why is this important? Because it's more kind of similar to walking. When we walk, in terms of the gait cycle, it's called, like you should be getting your knee into full extension, meaning full straining. If you don't have that ability, you'll see a little limp in your step. And that's going to lead to pain and issues. It could be hip or back pain. This is super important. And this one's so awesome because it doesn't just promote straining of your leg. You're in a weight bearing position. So you're going to actually promote a little strengthening of your glutes here, as well as your quads. So you're hitting your quads because you're pushing your knee to the wall behind you as the band pulls you forward. And you're hitting your glutes because you're actually trying to kind of drive your hips forward at the same time. So those two things work really well. And then you're actually going to engage your abs a little bit too. The big thing is that you don't let the heel leave the ground and you push your knee back and squeeze your quad. Right, so you see my hips not really moving. I could probably do a better job of not moving even more, but I have a really kind of thick band around my knee. I shouldn't let this move at all. The only thing bending should be my knee. My heel stays on the ground and I push my knee all the way back and hold for two to three seconds. So really simple, nice, easy stretches. I won't take you through the whole playlist. So you guys will be here all night, but hopefully those made sense to you guys. Let me cut out share here. Those are all the three exercises that I highly recommend you kind of get into as you start to do your kind of meniscal rehab. If you go to therapy or if you're at home doing your own rehab, it's a recap, it's heel slides first, straight leg raises second, 
and then terminal knee extensions third with a band. If you don't have a band at home, guys, you can put like a small squishy ball or pillow against the wall. You can do those terminal knee extensions against the wall. That's like a precursor to the one I just showed you. So to recap, you need to get imaging first. MRI is gonna show us which layer is damaged if it's truly a meniscal tear. Again, again, we have that outer third layer, the red zone, which doesn't get, um, which, excuse me, does get a lot of blood supply, so it's gonna heal and recover. Then you have the inner two thirds, which is the white zone, which isn't gonna heal and recover. And then we talked about treatment, right? What's gonna make it worse? What is gonna make it better? So if you missed that, go back and watch it. I'm not gonna go through. I just kind of renamed the three exercises. If you guys want access to the exercises, do me a favor, just put a smiley face emoji below and we'll give you access to those. We'll give you uh, links to the YouTube actual playlist. And you guys can check those out. But this is this is our second video in the series of meniscus for uh, February. Thank you guys so much for watching on the knee joint. It's been awesome so far. Um, as always, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a follow on Instagram at Dr. Trofner PTSC. Um, and thank you so much for watching again. Stay tuned because next week we're going to cover when it's okay and safe to return to jumping after meniscus injury. All right, thanks so much, guys. Have a great rest of your night. Take care. And hopefully I had an awesome Valentine's Day.